Hey, lovely. dropped my phone this week and didn't have that part of the cover on and that dent made my touchpad not responsive anymore oh my gosh so it's it's been challenging this week with my phone oh my gosh I just found one kid with this and I'm like, what is that? Where did you get that? And it's a water bottle, a full size freaking water bottle. How do they do this? I don't understand. I know it's science somewhere, but he shouldn't be inhaling the plastic. <laughs> that can't be good. Oh my gosh. It has been a day, guys. Is this the new book? And I have the 2022 CPT book. And because I'm trying to plan a integumentary workshop for my next one, um, the first Sunday in April, of course I have it open to integumentary. And I actually have some integumentary questions today. But I did have a question, if anybody is on, how many do I have on right now? 12? Does anybody know where the contrast guidelines are? I was in a tutoring session yesterday, and I had some questions, and one of our questions was a cool one about ultrasounds. This one right here. So on page 548, if you're in this book, this describes all the different types of 
ultrasounds, which is kind of cool because real-time scan or B mode, A mode, those kind of things. But I had another question after I got off the live and was tutoring with somebody else about a CT scan, I think. I think, I think, I think. Yeah, and there's no guidelines like right before you start coding CT scans, but I bet there is some guidelines about contrast somewhere in radiology. I was just wondering if anybody happens to know off the top of their head where that would be. I wonder, I wonder. Because I know what the answer is for one of the questions, but I don't know how they got the answer. Because, you know, rationale is pretty crappy when you get rationale from somebody. But I'm wondering. So you think it's on page 2513? Y'all are so awesome. Well, is that, that can't be. Oh, in the 2021. Yeah, that's right. But I'm wondering where the heck. The guideline is for contrast. Maybe there it is. That's where it's going to be. It's going to be way up here in the very front. So 525 if you're in the 2021. This is it. Administration of contrast. It would start right here. And since it's not with the codes where it should be with the CT scans, and stuff. This is probably something that I would want to move to those codes because if you were doing tutoring like I was last night and you don't 100% know a guideline by the by your heart, what would it be? So let me see. The question was if you if the order said oral contrast do you pick a CPT code with or without contrast? So let's see. I don't know if it says it in here. I'll have to research it. I know, I know. Well, here, oral or rectal contrast administration alone does not qualify as contrast. That's it. So the answer was, with oral contrast, you have to pick the CPT code that says no contrast. That was really cool. I knew that was the answer, but I didn't know where it was in the CPT book to find it because it wasn't with the CT, you know, codes. But that's it. That's why. So that is super cool to know that if they get their contrast administered orally or rectally, I've never seen that, but I've seen oral contrast for sure that you pick a code that says without contrast. So that is awesome. I'll have to send this to Debbie so she'll know where this is at. But yeah, that is cool guideline. Thank you all for the help of trying to find that. Hey, Mean, how's it going? Why do you have a one? That is so cool. Your name has a little badgy by it now with a little logo, like a little badge this is one and then when I click on it it says we're friends so maybe it's because you're one of my friends I follow you <laughs> I always try to follow the people that spend the hours watching my TikToks and then some people I can't follow because when I click on it it won't let me like there's some sort of security thing but um all all of y'all that are here every hour that I'm on Heck yeah, I follow y'all. But y'all got little badges. That is so cool. I don't know if you can. That's something new. I've not seen that on my on my end ever before tonight. So that's kind of cool. I'll show you what it looks like if I can get my phone to work. 
Oh, my touch screen is just not the best. Here we go. Back out, back out, back out, back out, back out. There we go. Gonna go here, gonna go here, right there. See me? You have this little badgy thing now. And I'm like, what, 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 what is that? And then if I click on it, it, it says friends. <laughs> TikTok's always updating. This page on the 2021 book, let me look. Let me get out that book. Sorry, I've been late and crazy. I did actually get caught up on my sleep and felt so good today. I actually, even in my sleep app, I had like rocked it with my sleep score. So I was caught up, even though I did tutor a lot of people yesterday. But heck yeah, I slept really good. And had more than enough of the deep sleep, you know. I scored well past that barcode is what you should get. But my sleep, I was great last night. I did good. So I was caught up and feeling good. It's just I got called out of the house at 2 o'clock. Didn't get home till 6. And then I hadn't prepped for today's live. And I got three people to do, four people to do tutoring with tomorrow for and I got to still prep for those guys. So it's been a crazy day. But And then the kids were out of school all day today, which I didn't plan for this week ahead of time because of teacher in service. I know they're having a teacher in service last month, but I had no idea they were doing a teacher in service this month. So let's see in our 2021 book. And boy, my 2021 book is all made up with all kinds of notes. Because I haven't done radiology section in my 2021 book yet. So let's see. Where is that about the contrast? Do they even have it? There it is. Only counts coding wise if needle is used. Oral or rectal does not count. I did write it out in my notes from last year. So we're talking page 513. Yep. In your 2021. I did add it to my notes. But just because I wrote it doesn't mean I remember everything that I did. I have to go to my page. I mean, that's part of why we have these books, especially for your um, exam. But really, that shouldn't be here. You know, because we need it with our CT scans. We need to go back here. Where is our CT scans? Because that's where we went last night looking for our guideline because we had just looked for a guideline for ultrasounds. And we found our guideline with the ultrasound codes. Um, so I assumed our CT scan co um, guidelines would be with the CT scans, but nope, it's not. So just one of those things we need to move from the front of the book to the back of the book for sure. But yeah, I'll have to, um, when I finish up my notes, it will um, have lots of information just like this done up for 2022, but my 2021 are still up obviously, but um, I know I'm going to have a lot more cool notes for 2022 once I get to that section. Right now I'm finishing up radiology and starting on integumentary because I want to do that workshop in two Sundays. So I got to finish up cardiology for right now. So okay this is for CT scan contrast. Yep that's what you're seeing. Sorry Tammy I'm talking in circles because I was just curious about if anybody else knew where that guideline was. So I had a question, you know, as an auditor, if I don't know 100% the answer, it sticks with me. And last night after I got through with a live, I ended up having to tutor somebody and I didn't get back to the live. But um, one of our questions at the end of the live was about a CT scan that they did on a person with oral contrast. And the question was, true or false, do you pick a question, do you pick a CPT code that says with contrast or without? 
And because of the way they said oral, of course, we picked without, but we wanted to see it written. Where is our guideline? Where Where is it so we can actually physically see it with our eyeballs and know that that's truly why we got the answer right? And I didn't have time last night to look it up, and I'm just now getting back to the books from my crazy day, and I was just popping on here waiting for everybody to show up and just asking a few people while they were... People were logging on. Have y'all ever run into that question? Does anybody know where that guideline is at? Because if you go here to the CTs, there is nothing about none of that right here. And it would be good to move that to these guidelines. And I know I underlined it and marked it last year in the front of the book with the guidelines. But I bet I don't have it moved to the actual codes so that I could write a header above everything that a page is full of CT codes. I would make sure to alert if oral contrast, oral or rectal, um, pick a code without contrast. That's crazy insane too, right? But I'm assuming it has to do with um, the risk for your patient. If you are injecting something in an IV through a needle, into a vein, you have a higher risk of an allergic reaction, right? You are going to need standby meds, probably a crash cart, something that, and personnel around that will be there just in case you have an issue. You can't just have a layman there that only runs the machine and not know any medical interventions and be able to get that patient where they need to go. Um, if they had a severe allergic reaction, my dad is allergic to the contrast of the IVs because he is allergic to shellfish and I am too. I wasn't earlier in life, but now I am allergic to shellfish very much so, so that I can't even walk on sand, you know, sand at the ocean. It, um, makes my feet swell so big cause I'm so allergic to it, um, and cross contamination at restaurants who are spooning out big plates of shrimp and then using the big spoon to dip out pasta or something um, can affect me too. But it's not where I go into breathing issues or anything. I just get a, a rash up and down my arms that'll pop up and just make me uncomfortable. That's all. But the feet swelling too is very <laughs> uncomfortable. But um, if you do oral or rectal, ingestion of anything usually a couple of benadryl and you're okay because your digestive system pretty much attacks everything you eat anyway and there's not that much of a risk long term directly into your heart allergic reaction right so i'm assuming it's the risk is why we pick the no contrast but they really ought to have separate cpt codes i think for oral contrast for a particular procedure or rectal contrast with a particular procedure. Why not just make some more CPT codes and separate those out and make it clear? I don't understand why you would want to build something that says no contrast when technically you really are giving them contrast. Even though they drink it, somebody's paying for that contrast somewhere. Anyway. Just interesting. I'm glad I found the, found the info. <laughs> no ceviche for me. I know, I know. And I used, my parents are big fishermen, like big, big time. They used to go to fishing tournaments and all this stuff. And they, you know, of course, that was mostly river and pond, but they loved shrimp. They loved catfish. They loved lobster. We were always going to the catfish cabin in Memphis, Tennessee to eat. And I can remember eating lobster and eating shrimp with them but as i got older no 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 and then my dad even becoming allergic to sulfur and um um contrast dyes and contrast i even had anaphylactic shock over penicillin one time when i was in uh seventh six sixth grade Last month of sixth grade, I got um, strep throat, went into the doctor's office, got a shot of penicillin and some antibiotic shots too, or, or antibiotic oral to take and ended up in the hospital for three, 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 
three, four days and two weeks home. I didn't even finish my sixth grade year because I was, I was, that was bad. Anaphylactic is not good. I turned purple all over with these big, huge whelps all over my body. It was bad. It was bad, bad, bad. And ever since then, I've been allergic to shellfish. Why? I don't know. It's so weird. All right. Let's get some integumentary going. What are you beeping about? Okay. Watchy. You need some battery juice today? Okay. And let's get to some integumentary. Because I have it on the brain. I really wanted to do a really good job of teaching everybody in Tigmatary because it can be crazy with all the different body parts. And especially when some of the removals can be in your muscular skeletal system instead of in Tigmatary. But you're still doing like a tumor removal or something. So some of it can be in totally different section. Um, don't forget some of the, some of the things that are happen in integumentary um, that are unique to integumentary. For some reason, AAPC or the CPC exam likes to have a question or two out there that is asking about um, different modifiers for this section for some reason and they'll put down two matching codes with the same CPT code and then that lets you know process of elimination we're going to pick those two codes because they're the same CPT code and then the only difference is modifiers and one of the modifiers they like to use and I don't know why it seems really silly is reduce services so if you ever see, I think it's 52, somewhere around there, um, the reduced services in Tigmatary, I've never seen an answer that would qualify for reduced services in Tigmatary because if you're cutting on somebody, you're pretty much cutting on them and you're going to get done and you're going to stitch them. There's not really a reason why you would stop because they're stable enough to get the stitches or the removal of whatever it is at that time so that helps you with the just eliminating all the wrong answers and you can not have to look up codes and not have to look up anything but if you see any answers with modifier 52 on it you can immediately get rid of those so you don't have to worry about it um, don't forget about um, your Modifiers 50 and 51 in this section do not go with any codes that have the plus symbol in front of it because those are your add-on codes. So if you see any answers that happen to have like this 10006 with the 51 modifier, it's a wrong answer. Don't ever pick it. So, and I can, you can. Put them beside every code. You can make an, a big announcement on the side of your thing. Or you could do something as little as this. Is that plus symbol equals times equals no modifier 50 or 51. Those are things that I've done in this section to help remember that I won't use that. But I guess I should put no 52 on this section too. Because they seem to like to put that down as an answer. And that just makes no sense. You really wouldn't. Do a 59 here. But don't forget to do your um, out-of-code sequences, even if they're on the same page. Um, just go on and find all your red codes, whatever page number they are on, and write down the page number so you can find them. These codes are supposed to be here, but they're on the next page because they're out of numerical sequence, and that helps you out here. What I've got in this nightmare of coloring is all these are just fine needle aspirations. They're all the same thing. But they do have sections where this one is no guidance at all. This one is using ultrasound. This one is using fluoroscope. And then the next page I have the um, CT and then the MR and then the MRI ones. But they're all just um, fine needle aspirations and they're just 
boxed off in those little sections just because of that. Um, be sure you know not to build any imaging on top with these because imaging is included because these include your imaging guidance. So don't add any 7-7 codes to any of these first codes starting off. Um, it doesn't tell you in that CPT thing other than it'll say ultrasound right here. This one does say no imaging guidance. This one will say fluoroscope. But the um, child codes, which are the usually the ones that are picked in the answers, they don't say anything about imaging guidance in it. And you might forget that because it's in the parent that to know that that's included. So... I went through and put no imaging. Don't bill any 7-7 codes with these. But that's the startup of how I started out this Intigmatary system. Let me check out some of this chat. Okay, good. We're doing good. Hey, Marilyn, thank you so much. All right, we got 14 on. Let's go practice some practice exam questions. So what I like to teach is what you need to know just for the, your medical certification exam, which is how to take the exam. It's a timed exam, no matter which company you're taking it from. And you need to get through those questions in less than three minutes each. So you got to be pretty fast. The answer's already in front of you. And then um, the questions are usually full of propaganda. So we try to do them without looking at the questions. So try to get in the habit every time you're practicing questions, to just look at the answers first. And we'll start out with the process of elimination, meaning we're just looking at these numbers as if they are numbers, not as if they were CPT codes and had any meaning. So what I'm looking for is similarities. So what would y'all keep for this scenario? For anybody that's been with me before and seen this process. Hey, lady. How's it going? Good to see you. Somebody likes A and B. Mean likes A and C. Jill likes A and C. Yeah, for the process of elimination, if I see the same exact code, then I try to keep those two. And then that usually tells me what they want me to, what I, what they're questioning me on. What they want to know is, do I know if I can add that code to this code or not? And that's all they're wanting to know out of this CPC exam question. So... I would go straight to the first code to make sure there's no parentheticals, notes around it, um, any notes that I've added in, anything to tell me that I should not use that other code with it or not first before I go to the second code because it could be one of those things. So in my notes, I have that this is a mammogram with guidance. And that 82 is an add-on code with this one, but the 83 is another parent code with a different type of guidance. What kind of guidance does 81 have with it? Our 83 has stereo guidance, 85 has ultrasound, 87 has MR guidance, So would there be a reason for us to add the 83 to the 81 since they're both parent codes? 
Thanks for the follow, Rose. Right, since the 82 is the add-on code for this one, we really wouldn't use that. That would be a coding irregularity. So you know your answer is A. That's all they're testing you on is to know, it is to see if you know and understand the differences between the two parents, what an add-on code is, and how to use the information from the CPT book to know what the answer is. Now you can read all this lovely question if you felt like it and look for guidance and look for wires and placements and routes and all that stuff, but it's, it's not going to change the answer at all. And it might just confuse you too, because you're going to think that because they've written all of that, that I'm going to need two codes, but nope, you don't. You only need that one. And your answer is just A. And I wouldn't read the question. I would have just let the codes tell me what the answer is and move on to the next question. That's really hard process to, to, to do, especially if you just finished a medical coding course where everything is indexed, everything is evaluated, everything is coded and, and a told to you that you need to look up and read um, routes and all this stuff and then you get down to this exam for your certification and what you're reading in the questions is mostly propaganda and stuff you shouldn't read at all and you should let the CPT codes and the answers tell you what the answer is and able to pass that exam, which is totally different from the way you were taught when you were taking a course, which is very hard to learn and to let go of. Let's try another one. <laughs> oop, oop. There we go. So what would we keep here? Hey, Blondie. Yep, same thing. I would do the same thing. Look for codes that are the very exact same. Don't look at the modifiers or things that come on after yet. Always just do the very first code. So then I would get rid of D and I would get rid of B. The only difference is, can I add the 23 to this code, or would there be options to do a 50 or a 51 in these? If we go look at our 15822, We have a parenthetical. What does our parenthetical say? We'll show off this book for just a second if I can. Yep. And also, we notice that the 80. The 21, the 22 is what we're looking at, right? And one of our answers has the 23 with it. That's the child code. Would you ever code the 22 with the child code? Is that something that you would ever do? Correct, because your parent code gives everything before that semicolon to its child. So 22 is a blip of the upper eyelid, but 
23 is a blip of excessive skin weighing down the lid. So they're two separate CPT codes, and you don't code them together. And then we do have that parenthetical that says if it's bilateral, we add moder modifier 50. So that's all this question is asking you. Do you know that you can't code those two together? So that would eliminate this answer. And you know that if you're doing bilateral both eyes, you're absolutely going to use that modifier. We can check our question right now and see that we have the word bilateral in the first line, of course, and that we are doing a blip. And that's it. That's all we're doing. That just confirms what we already know is that our answer is C and we wouldn't have to read anything technically, but you can always skim. Please don't read these questions. They're full of confusing stuff to make you think something else is the wrong, the right answer, but that would help you out a whole bunch. Let's see. Here's our next one. Mm. We got things all over the place, don't we? We've got the ones. So I'd get rid of A. And then here, we've got the one. Yeah, get rid of B. And then the zero is the same. And then these two are just the differences. So go look at your CPT book numbers first. And what's our differences? 11004. Since they're going to be in two different sections, probably. I'd keep an eye on that. We're under de debriefment for the first one. Where's our 0042? It's also under debriefment. So our 11004 is different from our 11042 because one set of skin is dead and dying. The other set of skin is alive and doing well except for whatever injury it has. So if you look at your CPT code descriptor for 11004, they're both epidermis and dermis, I think. Yep, epidermis and dermis. And then our 11004 is subcutaneous tissue, muscle, fossa, soft tissue, all that kind of stuff. But we have an infection going on in 11004. Oh, four. We have um, necrotizing, very dead skin for sure. And fossa just means connective tissue. Um, but we have an infection going on. In the other one, it would probably be more like just road rash, something that just happened to somebody really quickly that the skin isn't dead, dead yet. It's just full of debris. It needs to be cleaned. So those are our differences. Be sure and have that down. So we just need to check out our question to see if our skin is alive or if ish <laughs> or if it's um, full of infection, something that needs to be cleaned out due to an infection. And we do have that necronizing infection tissue. Yep. So we're going to pick our C and move on to our next question. Yep.
Yep, very good. I'll have y'all look at the next codes real quick, and then I have got to go check on the kids because I just heard something fall or hit. I don't know if they're fighting or what's going on. I'm going to check on them real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'll be sure and tell me which codes are we keeping? Lord. Sorry guys, my kids are a handful some days. <laughs> yes, I will upload this tonight on YouTube actually since it's super late. I know you're exhausted. I'm so sorry guys. Absolutely. Yep. Hey Twinkle, it's good to see you. Hey Betty. Absolutely. Sure thing Virgo. You're going to keep them all. <laughs> You don't like the fact that, um, you know, they, they are kind of all over the place. Um, we got the, yeah, they're just all over. <laughs> that would be difficult, huh? The interesting thing here is the diagnosis is, do we have cancer or do we have, what is D49? Do we have something... You know, maybe we could eliminate knowing what our diagnosis is, is really quick to help us figure out um, which two we could keep without having to go look at too much stuff. Don't know. Include simple, which is bundled. Yeah, that's true. But we don't know if we're doing simple or if we're doing a complicated thing either. So, yeah, it's really rough. We need to check out our question to see what we're doing. We're doing basal cell carcinoma of the left chin. So, knowing where that diagnosis code might lie in the D's or the C's might help us. And then, again, knowing where the chin excision is going to be. Where is our 11443? That's under excision and R one one six. Four four. Mm hmm. It's also under excision. Once benign, once malignant. What is a basal cell carcinoma? Is a basal cell carcinoma malignant or pre-malignant? That is going to be your differences.
Correct. Knowing, knowing that will help you. Also, don't forget in your little guidelines right before each. So if you're looking in your 11444s or 443s, right before you code those, there's this excision benign, and they list out in that unhighlighted area that should be highlighted in that quote, a list of the types of incisions that they do. And then if you look at the beginning of the 11643s, the beginning header, it tells you right here that it includes basal cell carcinoma and those kinds of things. That's super helpful right before you code a section to have it listed out. So you know that basal cell carcinoma lands you right here underneath all those codes, underneath right there. So yeah, we know we are gonna get rid of our C and D, right? And we're gonna keep our A and, A and B. So then the only difference is the size. And how I would capture the size is, I would not remember, because our two code differences are the 43 and 44, I wouldn't remember the 2.1. And I wouldn't remember any of these numbers. What I would remember is only the 3.0. Because that's the only number that makes a difference between that code and this code. If it's anything under 3.0, we know we're here. If it's anything over 3.0, we know we're here. That'll help you from remembering too many numbers when you go back to your question. Say if it's between this and this, and, and then if it's in between this, yeah, you don't have to do all that. All you need to know is that last number on the littlest code. That will help you. Just remember 3.0 when you go there. Under it goes here. Over it goes here. Simpler. Keeps less items in your brain so that you can have a better short-term memory outcome. So we're going to look at our thing. We do have a 3.0 here, but because we need to add our margins to it, we know we're over 3.0, so we know our answer is going to be A. Just because we know we have to do our margins. Yep, yep, yep. And you don't have to read all that question and get all confused. Yep, 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 yep. Thank you for the love. I already got almost 2,000 hearts. Y'all are awesome, even with my lateness tonight. Thank y'all very much. All right. Tiptoeing into muscular skeletal over here. What are you going to do with these codes? Are you going to look them all up? Have you got time for all that? <laughs> You're going to get rid of the 66, at least the one loner. There you go. And we'll go look at the 75 first is what I would do because I like to look at them in order of the smallest to the num biggest. So 23, 23075. Seven five, seven six, and seventy seven. So two of them are excisions, one of them is a radical resection. So it's probably between the twenty five and the twenty six, since they're both starting out with excisions and they're both tumors and they're both soft tissue. You'd think some of this stuff would be in integumentary, since an excision of something in the skin, but they tend to put the tumors or bone cyst um, over here in this section. They're both in this shoulder area. 
One of them is sub-Q and one of them is intermuscular. Now, when you do a search through your question, don't forget the fact that you have to go through subcutaneous tissue to get to muscle tissue. So just because we're going to see the word sub-Q doesn't mean that that's the answer. So I love to do the word searches, but when it's a difference between one part of the body that is deeper than another part of the body, don't forget that you have to go through the smaller part to get to the deeper part. So don't look for just sub-Q. What I would look for is anything that describes muscular tissue, fibrous tissue, something like those, those AKA terms that mean muscle, um, so that you know if it's not there, then you just stayed in sub-Q, if that makes sense. So let's looky, 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 look, 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 look at our question. And we'll look from the bottom up, if possible, please. And that's where they did the stitching, right? Maybe. Yep, they stitched the wound closed. But how far did they go down? Does anybody see anything that says muscle? It says they did something in the minor muscle that carries down through. Anesthesia was induced. The tissue was dissected and carried down through. But just because they dissected a large mass from the distal inferment ligament, Benign nature. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The block is just um, anesthesia. So, what do you guys think? Did we do sub-Q? Did we do muscles? Did we do radical? Ligaments? Sub-Q. Hmm. Ligaments are tied to... All of the above. They are attached to muscles, bone, and tissue. So that's an interesting question. Yeah. You can see from the bottom up that they said they closed the wounds... The subcutaneous tissue is what they closed. They're trying to point you to sub-Q, but if you read up here that they dissected down through the proximal aspect or aspect of that minor muscle that you know you're going to bill for muscle. They did go down through the muscle. Then their stitching when they closed the wound was just sub-Q. They didn't have to do a layered, um, layered thingy. They didn't do anything radical. They didn't remove excessive tissue. Um, and it wasn't a sar. It's, it wasn't an oma that they removed. I don't know if they even knew what they were removing, but they removed. Yeah, removed was and was sent to pathology. That just means that they. Um, how they prepped it as a block. You know those um, slides that we do for the maws that are in blocks, like mows? Sort of the same thing. That's just how they prepared the, the skin that they removed. Um, the wound was irritated. 
um, the repair of the m tears minor. And then they don't even mention the muscle, but they did have to do a repair on the muscle, but they only like named it, but they didn't classify it as a muscle, but they should have. It was a m minor muscle, but they stitched even the muscle back together. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And you could put, you know, like subcutaneous closure because that 76 right there would have a subcutaneous closure, but a blunt dissection down to the tears, whatever muscle. You could absolutely write that in here. I haven't done this section yet. But I'm just getting ready to. I did it last year. I wonder what my notes are from last year on 230. This will be a really good workshop because there's so much involved in all these. I mean, just from the differences in the open and closed alone. Good gracious, there's so much that can be done here. 23076. Did I do any? 75. All I did was mark them sub Q, muscle, and malignancy. I didn't do anything else to them. But this year, yeah, we're going to add more AKs to them. I'm going to just um, define the procedures and we'll have examples in there like the name of that muscle for sure, and that there could be a sub-Q closure right here, even though we're in the muscle. Yeah, we'll make better notes for next year for sure. Some of them are pretty cool. I like them, especially the notes about the open and closed procedures because there is uh, a lot going on on one of those. The manipulation is, you know, the AKA reductions. Those are always fun to find. That 26160 is the ganglion cyst that they remove. We used to call them lie bumps or Bible bumps because we used to take a Bible and hit your hand with it and it would get rid of the, the cyst. You'd have to hit it real hard with that Bible to get rid of it, but they usually work for a little while, but some of the pages turned out really well last year. But we can do better with some of the definitions and examples in there for sure that'll help out. And all that boxing all the way around does not help anybody, so I don't even do that anymore. All right. <laughs> Don't even do any of that. That's just a waste of ink right there, man. Just a waste of ink. Y'all, I slept so good last night. I got tons of sleep. So I feel so much better than I was earlier in the week. But I do have four tutorings tomorrow. So that's going to make for a busy day. And then what is tomorrow? Thursday? <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Friday, we've got another live. And um, Sister Shy's birthday was yesterday, and she is coming with her husband this weekend to spend the weekend here um, for her birthday and play video games and grill out on the steak and stuff. So. I got to clean the bathroom and a bedroom for her so that they have a nice place to stay when they get here. So I haven't seen her since Thanksgiving, so it'll be fun to see her for sure. <laughs> I did. I slept good. I slept so good. And then the kids didn't have to get up and go to school this morning. So I got to sleep in on top of it till, you know, I don't know, like 830. That was great from like one in the morning till 830, 
nine-ish, you know, get out of bed, take a shower and get ready and then have breakfast and do chores. And then I was about ready to start prepping for the live. And then I got a call and needed to go out and help, help aunt, auntie out. So we did that and just ended up being gone for like four hours, but that's okay. It's happy to help. And they never ask. So that was cool. Where are we with this question? What would you do with this one? We're back in Antignitary around the one sevens. What would we do? <laughs> I love sleep too, but man, sometimes it's hard. And then boys get off to school in the morning too, so that's going to be nice. I won't have to have them all day. They'll be at school tomorrow. Teachers had an in-service all day today. I hope they learn lots because my kids certainly aren't. <laughs> I don't know how to do freaking the area of a prism. Oh my gosh. I'm like, really? Why don't y'all teach them how to balance a checkbook? That might be easier. Okay. And more helpful. Okay. We are looking for my mouse. There we are. I like your plan. Let's go see what's going on with our 73. And can we add all these? Would you add that number twice? You wouldn't times it. You would, what, what's going on here? We need to see what's going on with these two codes to see if there's any parentheticals or things that we need to know about. So 172. 17273 and 72 after it what are we under we are under destruction of malignant lesions what is our guideline with malignant lesions does anybody know what one of our general guidelines are, just in general, usually, sometimes they don't require closure. What about, um, do we add things together? Do we code everything separate? One of those kind of things. No combining, you're right. A lot of things when we're suturing up things and doing measurements and doing body parts, we can add um, we can add them together. This destruction thing, we need to we need to describe each item that we're destroying. So could we actually have a bigger code coded before a a code that comes right before it like this 73 could be coded once and then we have a different size and destroy something else what if we have three items one that's this size and two that are this size what do you do do we times to it or do we code it twice like that answer has it down. Thanks for the follow, Ashley. <laughs> or would we use modifiers like Betty's asking? So what I would do here, because the only difference in these is two, 
things being coded or three things being coded, I would count. We have two malignant lesions here on the scalp measuring this and this. And then, and we have one malignant lesion on the neck measuring this. So we have another one there. So two plus one equals three. How many CPT codes are we going to have? On these destructions, we code each one individually. And since we have three that we're coding, two here, they each have their own measurement also. So each measurement gets its own CPT code. You could even do it that way to know that you have three and the only answer with three CPT codes under destruction Every little section has its own little guidelines, but under this destruction, that's all you need to do is do that. C is your answer with this one. I can't get it all into one screen, but C is your answer. Hi from Oregon, Bluebird Mom. You know, my favorite movie from Shirley Temple is about a bluebird, and she has a black and white tuxedo kitty cat who turns into her human, and she's a bad old cat and gets her in all kinds of trouble. And then she has a little, um, a little, oh my gosh, one of those snorty dogs, one of the little um, <laughs> little bitty things. He's, he's snorty looking, but anyway, he turns into a human too. And he's just like the dog. It's so funny, but that's my favorite Shirley Temple movie is about a blue bird. She has a friend who's super sick and she needs to go get her a blue bird. I don't know to put in a cage so she can sit and look at the blue bird in her window. I don't know. It's really, <laughs> Really sweet movie is the Bluebird one. And I am in Arizona, so I went on vacation to Oregon and Utah last summer. So real pretty country, real pretty country. Hopefully this helps, this example for um, medical coding exam, that under destruction you code each one individually and if you just go through your CPC exam question, when you see something like this, you just need to count the measurements that are given. Then you know how many CPT codes. And this is pretty cool. All you got to do is pick C without thinking much to it. You're originally from Arizona. I'm originally from New York, believe it or not. Um, Rome, New York but was raised as a child, oh, let's see, up until, I don't know how old, oh, how old was I? Was in, um, in Memphis, Tennessee, and a month before 9-11, I moved to California, and then Arizona in 2013, so been here ever since. <laughs> Rome, New York, there was an Air Force base up there, and that's where I was born, because Daddy was in Vietnam a long time ago, 50-something years ago. I forget how old I'm going to be this year, but the April 14th is my birthday. It's coming up. So anybody that takes their medical coding exam in April, you cannot fail. It's my birthday month. Y'all can't do that to me. I'm going to give um, have a free workshop um, the Sunday after my birthday, somewhere around there. That will be a totally free workshop for you guys. I think I'm going to do 
a freaking another E&M because I'm finding more E&M questions that I could go over. And I'm going to do a free workshop in the month of April for my birthday. <laughs> Same as yours. Aw, that's awesome. Trisha, yours has a three by it. You have a little banner by your name, just like the other one that says three. I wonder what those threes are for. That is so neat. These little badges y'all have now. So it's cool. I don't know why TikTok did it, but it's cool. They've updated something. Some people that I know for a while, you know, that have been following me have, uh, have little badges now. So these are cool. If yours is 79, I was born in 71. All right. Which are we going to keep in this example? What would you do here? So if I was looking at it, we've got all fours. Keep them all. No, Jill, you cannot keep them all. <laughs> Come on, be brave. Be brave. I know. I don't know what these little badgies are for. It's so cool. Let me see. Take a picture. If I got it. Let's see. You know, they do all these updates and then they don't tell me what the heck they are. So Mean had one and hers has a one by it. And it's bright and red and like crazy. And then here is yours. You have three by yours. I don't know if you gave me three gifts or have followed me 300 hours. <laughs> I don't know what the three is for, but that's cool. That's cool. So I'm doing the process of elimination. So um, I like... And I see patterns in these medical coding exams where they give you usually two throwaway answers that don't mean anything. And then they give you two answers that are super close numerically because the CPT book is um, a numerically ordered book. There's a difference between two codes that is so slight that if you didn't know how to use your book, you wouldn't know what the difference is in which code to pick. So when I'm doing the process of elimination, I'm just looking at these codes as answers. I never do read the questions for my medical coding exam questions. What I do is go straight to the answers and go through here and look for similarities. So they all start with four. They all have a two. And then right here is when you start seeing some separation. So I would get rid of D just because it's not like the other three. It doesn't mean I can't go back to it if I'm not in the right coding area or something like this. But 90 something percent of the time, always it's one of these things that's going on. And then it could be either the 10, the 5, or the 20. They're only five apart. I don't know. I like, I, don't, I like, I don't know why I like B and C, but I don't know. We could start with our 10 for sure. Four, two, four, 10. Let's go see where we're at. All right. Bluebird, now I've got Bluebird on my shoulder. That song is now on my shoulder, is on my, in my brain. Four to four ten. We're in excision again. They're just keeping us in the excisions. So this is an excision of a tumor. 
with no nerves involved. 15 has some nerves involved. And then 20 is a total. Total removal of everything. So let's go check out our question. See what we've got going on. So we'll look at the bottom up. So preservation of the facial nerve was completed. So they didn't remove that, right? So there was only a right lobe dissection, but they preserved the facial nerve. So they didn't mess with it. Too bad, right? So our 10 is an excision of just the lobe with no nerve dissection. Now, 15 is the lobe, but they preserve the facial nerve. And then total is the 20 down there. Yep, we've got the B because we preserved. And they said it just exactly like the CP, CP T code says they use the exact same wording. So that's helpful, 100% helpful. And it was all down at the bottom, which was great. We didn't have to move at all. Super helpful. Oh. It doesn't say anything. It's just preservation. That's all. The word is long. Word is long. Here's our next one. So we've got a difference between two sets of numbers. We've got the 69 and the 73. We need to go check those out first. Exclude one set, and then we just have to decide if we're going to add radiology to either set. So 365, where are we at? 365, 69, more cardiology procedures. I could even do another cardiology freaking one. I keep finding more and more cardiology questions. <laughs> Workshops. So we're inserting a catheter here. If we go to the 73, which is out of numerical sequence, but actually near the 69, we are also inserting a catheter. One is a pick line, right? They're both venous. They're both peripherally. Ooh, that's a hard word to say. <laughs> They're both central venous catheters. The 68 and 69 are no imaging guidance. 72 and 73 are using all imaging guidances to go along with it with supervision and interpretation. And that's our differences. So we just need to know if we're using using guidance or not. There's a tip guide wire. Thanks for the follow. Right here with ultrasound guidance. So that right there lets you know it cannot be A or B because they are using guidance. If there had been just the technique, 
with a guide wire, then we would have picked 69. Because they are using ultrasound guidance, it is the 73, and we know we do not use radiology on top of it. We don't add that code because it's all included with the 73. Any questions? Any questions on that one? So the difference is the parent code on 72 just says that it includes all imaging guidance. No matter how they used, what kind they used, it doesn't matter. But the 68, there's nothing about guidance at all. And it actually says without image guidance. They can use just a guide wire. They can do it without it, but they did use ultrasound because they use the word ultrasound. We know we're 73, and since it includes it in the CPT code descriptor, we know we had nothing from the radiology department, which is in the 7,000 section. Yes, I can repeat it again. And I don't have this particular question done in my CPT book because... I didn't have this one for the cardiology section workshop. So our 72 and our 73 is the same thing as 78 and 69, except this one, 68, is without, if I can get my pen to write, I left it out all night, without imaging guidance. No guide. This one includes all guidance. It don't matter if they used, you know, CTs or MRIs or whatever, but they're just going to use ultrasounds. They're always going to includes ultra sound, which we could do just from their example, includes ultrasound guide because it says includes ultrasound guide. So they're, they're both the same exact thing. Insertion of peripheral central venous catheter. Insertion of peripheral central venous catheter. The only difference it's the ages, of course, one's younger than, one's older than, same thing for these two, but the only difference between the two codes is guidance. Yep. Now, our question right here just simply says, ultrasound guidance right there, because we do see the C the exam question does have the word ultrasound guidance right in the second sentence right there. We know that they used an ultrasound, so we know that it's absolutely going to be 73. And we know we don't add anything from the radiology department, which is our 7,000 section, to it because the code in the CPT code descriptor says it includes all imaging guidances, any imaging documentation, any associated radiology supervision and interpretation. It includes SNI and everything. Everything to do with the radiology department. Absolutely. S and I is included. Yep, yep, yep. No worries. Glad y'all stuck it out and are here with me tonight because I was late. Late, late, late. Come on. Camera, don't fail me now. There we go. I know you like blue. I know you like blue. There you go. Good job. And let me get that permanent marker off my screen. <laughs> if I 
can. Oh, Lord. Probably can't. I probably have to go get some alcohol. Hold on. I don't tell Sam the answers to the questions. Where we go? We gotta go back up. Back up, back up, back up. Okay. And let's pour some of that on this. Get that permanent marker off. If you don't have rubbing alcohol when you're messing with these little Sharpies, you don't know what you're missing. That's for sure. 70% <laughs> will actually get your um, pins to work in too. Again, when they dry out and they start not working very well, you can just dip them for just a half a second into that. And that will fix your dull non-writing pins too. Have them writing like crazy again. All right. We did all of these. Let me get down to the one. Our next new one. I got some anatomy coming up too. But let's finish these. There we go. Except fluoroscopy. Did it say that? I wouldn't doubt it. There's always exceptions to every dang rule in this book. Every dang time. All right. We've got a 520 and a 620, or we've got a 630 and a 620 with a 6, 520 added to it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Y'all like B and C, even though this one's got the five. Yeah, probably. Let's see. Let's go see what our differences are between these two codes. Since this one's here, I'm leaning towards B, 30620. Let's go see. 306. Twenty and thirty. So we've got a dermaplasty that does not include a graph, and then we've got a nasal septum repair. Getting cold. Time to turn on the heater. Just don't give any long cases. Mm. Well, what about <laughs> just a long CPC exam question? I don't know why it's so long, but it is a little long. That's the bottom. Look at those fancy forceps they're using right here. Whatever the question is, I'm going to write that proper name down beside these. I don't even know if I have that written down. I don't have that written down beside either one of those codes. And if the answer is one of those codes, I'm definitely going to write that proper name down. Look at that fancy thing. My goodness. Love proper names. We also have, oh, that's the antibiotic. Bactrim was placed. Impregnated with Bactrim, really? You just put some antibiotic cream, Neosporin, on their nose. <laughs> and they're saying impregnated it with it. Oh, my gosh. Look at those fancy words. Fancy, fancy. We do have a deviated septum. I've got one of those. What's our surgery? They're only given our diagnoses, which is deviated septum. 
What's her surgery we're doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're brought to the operating table, intubated. The septum was injected. Yep, yep, yep. Total obstruction at the left. They did some suturing to suture stuff in place. Those flaps back in place. They chiseled down with a mallet. Oh my gosh, somebody's going to have some black eyes. So are we doing one procedure or two is what our question is asking us. <laughs> Have you had that done before? I've always wanted it done, but I've never had it done. I got the hugest deviated septum and a very bumpy, witchy nose in the bridge. But yeah, that just sounds like torture. So in this question, they're not telling us what the surgery is. You need to figure it out by based off the notes of the surgery on what they did to see if they did one or two procedures. Do we see any repair of any nasal septal perforations? Were there any perforations in this nasal cavity because if so that's going to be our 30 we know they had the dermoplasty we know that we know it's the 20 we just need to know if they did a nasal repair of the septal holes was there any any holes yes they did y'all see that her perforation you're right Mm-hmm. Yep. She had holes, too. So that's why we are definitely doing C. C is if you don't have under um, the code 30630, repair holes, H-O-L-E-S. Um, that's what the perforations are, but that's super nice that they put the actual word perforations in the CPC question. The intranasal under the 20, I have down as my notes that they remove mucosa tissue. So let's see. There's her perforations again. She had those perforations. More perforation. Boy, they went, they set it all over the place again. There's four. Four times they said it. Right here, the removal of the diseased tissue. 
is the removal of mucosoid tissue. That's what I have is my notes for the CPT code 30620. Removal of mucosoid tissue. And then the other one, I have the repair of the holes. So that's how we know that we are billing both. And there's no parentheticals that say anything about not being able to bill them both together. So, boy, they said perforations multiple times. My goodness. And there is no answer with 30 by itself. So that's helpful, too. So if you know you got to bill 30 and there's no way you can get around it, then you know your answer has to be that one, too. That's <laughs> a fancy word again. Yep. Perforations. <laughs> And impregnated. That question was just full of things. I mean, all they did was put Neosporin up her nose. That's all that is. And they called it impregnating. <laughs> I'll get real Southern here in a minute because that's just silly. <laughs> Slap some Bactrim on their nose. That ain't going to help those two black eyes that you just gave them when you malleted their face with the hammer, dude. Really? You chiseled with a hammer? <laughs> yep. Yep, they did them both. Yep, up there. Sorry, up here at the top. They did this, the spectoplasty. Sorry, not the same one is up here I was putting up there but they do that's removal of the the mucosa tissue see you've got your mucosa tissue right there resection they move it around same thing is what I was pointing at before and anytime they say the diagnosis uh, deviated septum it's always 520 always always You can get those holes from um, chemical burns, from like, you know, snorting too many chemicals, or you can get them from having um, a long-term history of deviated septum and blockages of that side of the um, nostril cavity that just erode, become diseased, and make holes in it. So there can be couple of reasons why you have the holes there but hers had a complete occlusion of one whole side so I'm sure she was whistling every time she was talking with that blockage Trying to take care of some formatting issues. All right. What are we going to keep here? Remove the C. All right. Let's go look at our 46040. 46. 46. Mm. 
for 6040. 45 and 50 are all in a row. So, mm, the I S C H I O in the four six O forty. It says it's an incision and drainage of the I S C H I O rectal. That means around the rectal. No. Rectal and pelvic area, sorry. And then the peri-rectal, P-E-R-I, means around the rectal. So if you're in the I-S-C-H-I-O rectal, then that means you're at the rectum, but also it includes the pelvic area a little bit. Um, it's just all very, very close right there. So ISO and peri means rectal to pelvic ish area the 45 muro muscular mucosoid those kind of things we're we're intra and sub but we're all more muscular ish area um and then your 50 is through so your perianal instead of perirectal, so your perianal, which is through the anal canal or around near the anal canal. So they're all pretty close, but they all have very slight subtle differences in them and where they're located at. So hopefully that helps just a little bit. Oh. So we've got a perirectal. So one of them will definitely have the perirectal name in it. So that's helpful, which is our 40, right? We have an abscess there. We also have the ice rectal, which is also contributing to the 40, right? So just matching up those two words is pretty helpful there. Did I say see something that said near near the whatever? I lost it as soon as I saw it. <laughs> yes, you have a question. What's up? Alexis Jeremiah Metcalf, Metcliff, Metcliff. Very cool. Near the tip of the tailbone. That could be a very cool word to write. I forgot to write my my forceps here. Where's my forceps go? I need to go back and write that. Don't forget that. I gotta. That's why I circled it again. Sorry, <laughs> I'm talking to myself. But yes, I do agree with B. And all we had to do was match, and they were very kind. They didn't give us any AKA terms or anything. They just picked out those two words that are definitely in your CPT code descriptor um, that match up with the correct one CPT code, which is super helpful for sure. I know my boys are not outside in the garage playing the drums at 10 o'clock.
o'clock at night, are they? They wouldn't do that, would they? Is that what I'm hearing? Or is that the TV? That's got to be the TV. They would not be outside doing that. They know better, right? What notes should be on 45 and 50 from the what? Medicine section of the 2021-22 book? Um, what notes should be on 45 and 50? That doesn't make sense if it's in the medicine section. What does the number 45 and 50 have to do with the medicine section? Help me out with that part. Oh. I know my kids. My kids, y'all, they're killing me. From the medicine section, an eight-year-old was accompanied by his mother to see the pediatrician for a polio vaccine. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. I gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Was there any counseling involved or just the vaccine and that's it? So if there was no counseling noted... They would be getting the 90471 vaccine code for the immunization shot syringe. If there was counseling, they'd get the 90460 for one. And then notes. Y'all don't even want to know what notes I got on here. This is just for the flu vaccine because they get all crazy and how apart they are. If they come from a multi-dose file or if they come from a single-dose pre-filled syringe, I got crap notes. I mean, just notes, notes, notes. More notes than y'all would ever want to know. Um, polio. Where's polio? Intermuscularly, and the physician assisted evaluate. What? Assistance evaluates an established patient to administer. Okay, 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 okay. Should be your 90713 vaccine. 90713. 90713 is your polio virus vaccine. It's inactivated. You can give it subcutaneously or intermuscularly. Yes, you're right, Alexis. Just don't forget your syringe code, which could be your 90471, or if the MD gave counseling, then they get the 90460. Just because the doctor ordered the vaccine doesn't mean they got counseled with it, because you need to be given or told your risk factors involved in getting the vaccine or versus not getting it. But you can always get an order from a doctor to get the vaccine. And you can get the vaccine without the counseling, too. But either way, that'll just cover the syringe part of it. And the administration is the 7-1 code and the 60. But yes, your polio vaccine code is correct with the 713. Yeah. Yeah, if you are not in Discord, 
it's it's a place for all of you to gather and help each other out and not be um, bombarded with you know ads or anything else discord is lovely it's this app you download whether you have apple or um android it's um usually used for like gamers and stuff but um it looks like mickey mouse britches to me you download it set up your account ask me for a link i have a link tree here in the tiktok bio but we have a main chat room right here where Betty and Twinkle and everybody helps everybody else um, with exam questions. And then on the side here, when you click the little three dots in the side, after you're in main chat, there's the three lines right there. You've got all these practice rooms. You can go into the CPC practice question room. There'll be questions in there. And you can help or work along with them. We share questions. Um, and we have exam day prep, E&M resources, ICD-10, CPT book prep, what you would do for even COC certification or auditor <laughs> um, or anatomy, any kind of thing that you want to study. Our Discord is a lovely place for that. We even have job resources who we've helped. I got so many people I got to post in there with their past this month. I've just been so busy, so I got to post some more in here. Um, get your CEUs and other kinds of certificates. Our um, Discord is lovely, wonderful place. You can even um, private message me if you need help, um, those kind of things. But this is our Discord room, the 6243 number can help you find us, but I do have a, a link here in the bio. And of course, if you go to my website, uh, bring that up real quick, which is medicalcodingbygen.com, you can also do the three things down there and go to social media links, which will have our discord group listed here too there's our discord you just click that link but just be sure and go there and sign up download the app get your account set up first then click the link and you can get right into discord but tiktok links are there youtube links are there i replay all my um lives there on youtube um if you purchase a workshop you'll find your workshop they're available for you to replay too. Your our Facebook group is there, but we're not as active there as we are in Discord because there's so many ads and there is um, no way to add as many people as we want. I have to restrict how many I can allow into our group because it'll only allow me to have 250 where Discord we're able to add as many as we want and that is super cool and super helpful yep tons of people are in there Betty works so hard I don't have to put her on payroll she's in there so much helping people when I'm not around um with regular job or family life so it's awesome all of you helping each other for one one goal and anytime you have questions homework questions um, coding questions real life situations you can go in there and ask for help and Betty is just like a, a resource queen. She will find you the answer. And I am too. I will worry over something until I find the answer. Like that CT scan one that I found last night. I knew what the answer was, but I wanted to see it for real life in the book. Where's my rule? Where did they keep it? So, and sometimes, you know, when it's one in the morning, it's hard to find anything, but the back of your eyelids so it's always good to revisit and try to find it again later but let's see what does this question tell you right here if you're looking at this and you're seeing these answers what should 
immediately hit your head. Yep, we are thinking Medicare patient, right? Right off the top of our head. And you could just skim your question to make sure and see if you do have a Medicare patient. If you do, then you know it's going to be a HIPPIX code. And what I've got, hopefully, and look, the last sentence does say Medicare patient. So we are definitely getting rid of the four codes. But if you have not written near your 45380, which is your colonoscopy code, if you have not written down the common Medicare codes in this book right next to those, um, that would be super helpful. That would save you a lot of trouble from getting rid of this book, going to go get in the hip picks book, and just looking up the simple colonoscopy code for a Medicare patient. Having those in your CPT book sounds funny, but that's a really good place to put those. Uh, some people put them on the main page where we have the digestive system, but this is also a really good place to put those. So now that you know that you have a Medicare patient and that you are doing a polyp removal of a Medicare patient, what would be your answer? <laughs> Oops, here I am moving my camera. So if you're on my um, Tiki Talk, like I just opened up my other, my other phones, Tiki Talk, and you go to my link here where you're at. You click on my little face there with me and the kids. There's a link tree right here in this bio. You click on that somehow or another. Oh yeah, my, my phone is not working my touch screen, but it has all the links here to Instagram, to copies of my notes, the YouTube repeat labs, but also the Discord study group is right there too. It's there. You can click on that and get right into my Discord. That's what she's talking about. If you're right here, you just click on the face up there. Ooh, and we got 2,000 likes tonight in the live. <laughs> it's Twinkle. How long have I been on? Thank you for the roses, bells. Mean, now your name says two beside it. What the heck is this? Why? It said one earlier, and now it says two. What are y'all doing to get these little bonsai little numbers beside your name? That's so cool. I'm just like, what is this? What is this? What is this? Okay, so now I'm clicking on things. No, I don't want to do... I'm clicking on things on TikTok that are advertising, but that's like a battle, like a like a live battle with other people. We sh I should find another teacher that codes, um, and we battle it out with a live is what TikTok's is advertising. Sorry, but now your name has two beside it. This is driving me nuts. As an auditor, I'm like sitting here. Look, Trisha, she had three. You had a one, and now, for some reason, you have a two. What the heck? 
Why, why are y'all getting these little badges? Those are cool. They're bright and show up, but I'm, I guess I'm supposed to be acknowledging that you've done something twice today. I don't know what. Maybe you joined my life twice. I don't know. But why would Trisha have three? And why would me only have two? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm too old for this, I guess. <laughs> so yeah if if you go to colonoscopy you know what you're 78 then you can write in your medicare codes for the same procedure if it was a medicare patient so that you know when you're faced with one of these lovely scenarios you don't have to go run into another book that's what i mean come on come on Come on. I know you like the blue. Where's the blue? There we go. All right. All right. Here's some anatomy questions. There's our answer to that one. But here's one of these anatomy ones. And let me put this here so that I can back it out so y'all can see it. So ignore this. This is the answer to the question up above. But here are some new anatomy things that I found. And if you didn't get, if you've purchased the um, document from Etsy, that is uh, what's been on the exam the last 45 days. I did update it yesterday, the 22nd. And I sent that out to everybody that had purchased it. There's a couple of people that have um, their email addresses are bad. They just come back, failure to add. Um, but everybody got that email. It's now up to like 39 pages. I remember when we started it. Yeah, 39 pages. We had We had 25 or something. So... It's on up there. I added it. Sorry, my touch screen is just not working. Um, okay, there we go. So I added the info for March's, um, what was on their exam here in March. So that's super helpful info. And it's on there with those last four pages. And then this is the previous February's update, but March's has all this info on it from March's exams. Whoever's been taking it, let me know their little impressions and what they thought about the exam, what definitions they thought might be on there that we needed to know, um, what type of CPT codes they remember from their exam. So that's on there and it's been updated. If you didn't get it, please message me somewhere and don't do it like an open chat because I'll never find it. But private message me either on Messenger, email or in Discord. You can message me like I know I like the messages because like if I do a list, I know I've got these people that messaged me and I got to go in there and see what they said to me. It keeps me track of who I need to talk to and that's helpful. Um, I've been gone all day, so I know I have people here that I need to talk to on Messenger and they're bold and black so that I know that I need to still talk to them and see why they messaged me. So that's helpful. It helps just keep me track because searching through chat for somebody that might said my name is sometimes hard the more popular I get. So just let me know and I'll email it to an updated email address or whatever. But anybody got an answer for this HIV question? How is HIV related to AIDS? 
is it, how would you do the process of elimination, which you could still do. We have three that have one is, one is, one is, and then one describes. So that's different. Um, one is active, one is unconfirmed, one is HIV-1, one describes an infection agent, and the other describes a disease. B and C are out. Yeah, we don't have anything in remission, right? We would never have anything like that. We would never have anything called HIV or AIDS if it was unconfirmed. So those words most definitely get those out. And then do we have something called HIV-1 and HIV-2? Does that make any sense at all? That wouldn't make any sense. So even if I didn't know the answer, I at least know what is wrong, right? There's no remission and there's no way we would do anything unconfirmed and I don't know what an HIV-1 or an HIV-2 is, so even if you didn't know the answer, you could eventually come up with your right answer as A, yeah, which is right. Very good, very good. All right. What if you don't know? And what if it's not updated on any of your anatomy charts that you made up? Thank you for, for the follow, Punky. <laughs> Betty and Mean. So on this next question, we are looking for something on the buttocks. And I like the way Forrest Gump says that word. Do you know which one is? They usually contain hair and debris. Oh, Lord. What if you didn't know, and I'm, and you had no idea where to look it up, and you're not allowed to bring in a by um, a dictionary? I was just wanting to show y'all, and what if you just wanted to confirm, to make sure you wanted to find something in the book that says this is where this is at. And if you had time, got to make sure you got time. So, yeah, I would go to the back of the book and I would go look just simply for that word. You have an index in the very back of your CPT book that is alphabetical, which can lead you to incision and drainage, which can lead you to that CPT code. Let's go look that CPT code up. 10080. Sometimes you get lucky and, you know, it'll say exactly the name part right there, then and there. Like NEF is for kidney. But some of them, you won't get so lucky. You actually have to go to the CPT code. That's okay. It won't take you long. 10080. And it's better to get it right if you end up having enough time to do this. Which you've got longer for every question this time instead of last year. 10080. Is that right? Did I say it right? No. One zero zero. Oh. 
use that as a dictionary. Mm -hmm. I would have, to, I didn't even think about it. When I did my exam, I did not think about this. So I was looking in the um, ICD-10 book in the um, anatomy sections before you start coding a diagnosis of this. Yeah, I did do it right. 100, am I in the right ones? Nope, I'm not in the right ones. That's why I got the wrong code. 80. One. Up there. And I've got it in my notes that that poly noid right there is your tailbone I went on and defined it because some people might not know what that was or buttocks of the coccyx always also put that in there so even when you see little ex exam questions you know to save you another step you could actually go back here and write the talks. <laughs> Tailbone. Then you've got it in both places and you don't have to go actually to the CPT code, but who knows what you'll be asked during your exam. I just dropped my mouse. Let me go dive for it real quick. It's on the floor. Oh. All right. So, yes, D is your right answer on that one for sure. All right. Next one. What do you think about this one? Thank you for the love. Thank you for the love. And the reminder of which CBT code I was looking for. Sometimes you just don't can't find the numbers. You know, they're just eluding you. I was just going way too far down, and it was way up. All right, this one. What kind of documentation is found during patients' recants of their history? Patient's response to current treatment, reasons for the encounter, the provider's observation of the patient's mood, or the patient's use of tobacco abuse. Would there be one and two, one, two, three? Would it be all of the above, none of the above? You could pick multiple answers. So the response to current treatment, would that be in their history? <laughs> and then all four. <laughs> Not all four. Not all four, but close. Just take it one at a time. Is the patient's response to current treatment, would that be part of the history? If they're coming back for a follow-up, yes, absolutely it would be. The reason for their encounter, would history be in that too? Chief complaint. My chief complaint is I'm not any better and I still feel like crap, right? So that still has history in it. <laughs> the observation of my mood as being tired and exhausted and cranky. Is that part of my history? <laughs> well, it was part of my past, but today am I being cranky? Is my mood 
part of my history for today's visit because it's an observation. No, that would not be part of the history, right? Not generally, not an observation. Tobacco use, is that part of a history? Yes, to know whether I smoked or not ever in my history, that is a yes. And no, I never have. So your answer is going to be, with this one, the answer that includes one, two, and four. So your answer is C on this one. Phew. Yep. History with tobacco use. Yep, that's part of history. So sometimes they might just ask you about certain parts of the chart, what's included in it, those kind of things. So don't be frightened by them. Um, just slow down and take it one step at a time. Make your notes, whether you're in person or taking the exam online. You can still make notes like I do. If I can find my, I don't know why I moved that thing like I do. I do. Mm. Even if you're taking your exam at home on your own computer screen, you can absolutely get a dry erase board marker and come through here and write, yep, uh, get your smaller marker. Yep, we can go no, and we can go yep, and then I can find my answers that do have one, two, and four in it, which is C. You can mark on your own screen. It don't matter. It's your screen. You can mark on it just like I do. And you just need a washcloth, mark it off, and then go to your next question. But you can, you can do this just like I do just from home, if you're taking your exam in person, you can underline or highlight or make notes about each question. I would start practicing. Um, if you're going to take your exam at home, start practicing doing this with the dry erase board. That way it's not new to you and you've got good handle on it. You know how to do it becomes second nature to you as you're doing your practice questions. If you're going to take your exam at home and you want something to write on and you want to be able to make sure that you get rid of the wrong answers, keep the good ones like I do um, so that you're just not picking a wrong answer just because you mistook where you were at you, and, and you're not able, you think you're not able to do it like I do. And if if you're able to do it like this, it's a whole lot easier to make sure that you're you're checking the right box for sure. So just get in the habit of doing that with the dry erase board already if you're going to take it at home. I like the wordy questions too. Yes, I did trick you here. Yes, I did. I always try to find something that I can trick y'all. I really want y'all to sometimes look at moderator. Twinkle, your number, your number is three. You have three, a badge on your name. <laughs> is it time? Is it already time? Is time up? I hate the short ones too. Bells, you've got a one. I hate the ones. Oh gosh, it's already been two hours. My goodness. Um, I hate the ones that ask me which one is not true. Which one is not included? Those are so hard because I'm trying to look for things that are true. I'm just so trained with it. Okay, I don't think I have too many more. Maybe one more. How many more? Okay, I got one more question. Okay. Same sort of thing. On this one, 
which one is true, which one is true about the prostate. And so what I would do is go straight to my prostate picture, which is my male genitalia, and hopefully have it filled out. And if you have not done so, y'all need to put the functions down beside every body part on all these major chapters. So if you have an anatomy picture um, right before a section that you're going to code, just like the female, just like the male, just like the eyes and ears, and you have not gone through here and wrote down exactly what that body part does for the body, um, it probably will hurt you for the CPC exam because a lot of times they're just asking for the function. So I would go straight to my prostate gland. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Prostate gland. I already have down that it adds alkaline to the fluid, which neutralizes other acids. It's an accessory gland. What else do I need to know about it? It seems like this question is going to show me what else I need to write down beside it because we know true things right? That the prostate is part of the male reproductive system. Yep, we can check mark that one. It helps to make and store fluid. It makes testosterone and it is part of the female urinary system. Oh, we can get rid of that one. We know that ain't true, right? So what of these two other things are true, if anything? What do you think? helps make and store helps make testosterone I've got in my here that this helps lubricate and nourish and keep alive the sesamoid vessel. And it helps to make some fluid and accessory glands. Um, but do I have what makes testosterone or what stores stuff? I'm trying not to get banned. <laughs> Past two hours. Okay, last question. So are y'all saying which answer is true? Is it just I or one? Is it one and three, one and five, or one and two? I know it's not one and five, so we can absolutely get rid of C. And then it's not saying that they're all three together. So we know it's just going to be probably two of them, right? If you're doing the process of elimination. So we know it's either going to be one and two or one and three. What do you think? Yellers. I can't trick y'all. Can't trick y'all at all. Yes, it is D. So we need to add to our notes that it also helps to make and store this fluid. I don't have that beside our prostate gland. I just have that it new it helps mix it adds that fluid. But that it stores it stores. I need to put down that it stores. Just anything that they word differently than what you have in your notes in their practice exam questions is super helpful. And some of the questions that I find in other practice exam questions for other certificates are on the CPC exam. Uh, for example, one of Betty's questions about the lab, the CK 
being ordered three times and how to write the answer for a test that is done three times within 24 hours, how would you write it um, as a and bill it? Um, that question is also in the COC um, practice exam questions and stuff like that. So it's vice versa. Some of these questions float around between both certificates. So it's kind of interesting to know that too, that some of your CPCs, this is a general overview of all areas of coding, that even when you go into some of those specialty certificates, you'll see some of the same questions that you had on CPC. So this one, store and make. Fluid. Since I already had all that written over here on that side, I just wrote it on the line that's pointing to the prostate glad that it helps make and store the fluid too. I just didn't have that. I said it makes and adds some alkaline to it to help and that it's an accessory gland, but I didn't have that part in there. And we know it's part of the female reproductive system. So that one wasn't too hard. But anytime you can add added notes from one of their questions to your anatomy, that's super helpful for sure. But I hope that was helpful. I That is it. That's all I prepped for tonight and did finally get in the two hours. I will post this on tiki, on YouTube. Yes, I was about to say Tiki Talk, but um, YouTube for the replay. Thank you all for staying up so late with me. I have um, four tutorings tomorrow. Everybody's uh, taking their exam on Saturday. So <laughs> everybody getting in their last little shot of uh, tutoring tomorrow. So um, we're going to wish everybody so well on Saturday because I know I have so many taking it. I hope that information of what was on the exam the last 45 days, the update also got to everybody that's taking their exam this Saturday. And y'all are making notes in your CPT book. I am around. No, thank you, Mean. Thank you, Twinkle. Thanks, everybody, for all your help. And gosh, dog, I wish I knew what these little badges were, but you know I appreciate all of you. I don't need to be flagged and told that y'all do a ton of stuff for me. I really appreciate it. And uh, you make the evenings so wonderful and I feel so good going to bed knowing that I helped somebody and hopefully one word I said will be on your exam and you'll know it and, and feel at ease during your exam because Jen talked about that. Jen said do this so and, and you'll be able to pick your answer and pass your exam and get that career you really want. So y'all bring me so much joy. I really appreciate it guys. <laughs> you have replaced Netflix. Oh, that's awesome. You know, y'all have replaced Netflix for me too, because I was like watching these series. Yeah, yeah, y'all really have. You've done the same for me too. Poor Netflix is still still getting that monthly payment out of me, but it's just not on. <laughs> oh, y'all are awesome. Y'all are so awesome. Thank you so much. Aw, thank you. <laughs> no, 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 no. You worked the miracle bells. You really did. You put in the work. You did. I know, but you know that, that, I know, but I've had to see some of those Korean dramas. They've had to play in the background, you know. I had to see, oh my gosh, I had to see that the train one with the zombies. So good. Oh my gosh, I love that train one. And then the one with the, of course, that was the the game. 
um, where he won, and then he was about to go visit his daughter at the very end, and he didn't get on that plane, and I'm screaming at him to get on that damn plane, and he didn't get on the plane, and he turned around, and he went back. Oh, my gosh. Get on the plane. Go see your baby girl, and then turn around. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Bells. Thank you all. I will see y'all again, I'm sure. I'm going to do cardiology. Just going to make sure Travis is in bed. And where are we in cardiology? Where were we last night? I didn't do anything after I finished the live. I meant to come back, but did not. Where am I at? Where am I at? What code are we on? We're somewhere right in here. <laughs> We're on page 260 of the CPT code book. Let me make sure Travis is in bed asleep, and I will be back in just a few minutes. And we will just do the codes for a little while. Yeah, it's only 11, so I've got another hour in me or more that we can work on this cardiology chapter. i got to get moving. <laughs> Yep, I'll be back for another live on Friday. I'm still working out the time. I'm thinking, I mean, you know, I really want to do 4.30. I have family coming in town this weekend. I didn't know they were coming in town, but they're coming in town. They let me know on a Facebook post yesterday. <laughs> so I got to get some cleaning done. But yeah, I need, and I don't know if she's coming tomorrow or Friday. Yeah, it's got to be Friday, right? Anyway, so um, the sooner the better for me so that I can get to clean in house. I'm one of those southern ladies. Everything has to be perfect. Uh, uh, yeah. And I got to have the, the, the very best groceries and things that they know they love and cooked. And the linens all got to be done. The bathroom's got to be scrubbed. I, I, you know, they don't come over to my lived in house. Everything is pre prepped for them. So I got to get busy with that. So. And I got so many tutoring tomorrow, but I will definitely do another live on TikTok on Friday afternoon, 4.30 Arizona time zone till 6. And then um, I've got tutoring on Friday and I even have tutoring on Saturday, but um, I probably won't be live because if they do show up, I'll do the family time on Saturday and Sunday. They'll leave early. So maybe Sunday night I'll be back for more cardiology. But definitely do a live on Friday afternoon with more practice questions. Um, and then my next live after that will be Monday afternoon at 4.30 Arizona time zone. Monday, Friday, and Wednesdays. Yes, yes, yes. But anyway, I'm going to get off here, go check on Travis real quick, and I'll be right back to start on this uh, cardiology code. I will see you all in a little bit. Thanks so much, Betty. I'll see y'all in a minute.